Hey everyone, this is Tommy with Geek Tyrant and Card Games on Computers. I'm here, Konami was kind enough to send me a box of the 25th Anniversary Rarity Collection 2 for the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game. Uh, this set, I feel, has caused quite a bit of controversy in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community. Um, and I, I think some of it's founded, I think some of it's not founded. Um, this, this is definitely an interesting set from what we've seen and heard. Um, you can read my full thoughts over on Geek Tyrant. I will put a link in the description below when that link is live. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a set that's been talked about quite a bit over the past month or so. Um, so my initial thoughts are, first off, I really like the packaging on this. Like that just looks really good. It's way smaller than a traditional trading card game box. Um, and I really like that. I mean, here in North America, you get, uh, there are nine cards per pack, that's everywhere. But in, I believe it's just in North America, uh, we only get 18 packs per box instead of 24. I believe you have to go to like the EU or something for that. But it's such a nice size. Um, then of course, you know, you open it, the shop opens it and whatnot. Hey, look, you go ahead and you can put it like this. Ta-da, it's a nice, lovely little display. Um, and then these flaps are kind of in the way, honestly, but cut them off or whatever. Um, anyway, so then you get all the packs in there, all 18 packs. So. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna jump right into the opening of, I'm just gonna go through all 18 packs. We're gonna open up all 18, and then we're gonna talk about it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get opening.
Okay, guys, there's 18 packs of Anniversary of Rarity Collection 2. Um, give me a minute. I'm going to clean up a little bit and then we'll talk about. We'll, we'll talk more about the actual set. So just give me a minute. Hang right. Hang tight. We'll get there. Okay, guys, we are back. I've cleaned up my area a bit so we can actually talk about things. Um, so first things first, let's talk about the rarities. I mean, as is standard, you get the uh, super rares, you get the ultra rares. These are the two most prevalent. If you look at them side by side, I mean, you get roughly the same amount of each. Um, each pack actually has more ultras than supers, but those ultra rares do have a chance of being upgraded into a special rarity. Um, and then you have your secret rares, which are pretty standard. Um, then you have the four luxury rarities. We have our uh, quarter century secret rares, which are just super shiny. I think of the three of the ugh, of the four that I have here. Honestly, I think Gold Sark probably looks the best. Like there's Alternative Dragon. Uh, we'll come here to Alu Aluber, and like that actually looks pretty. Aluber is possibly my second favorite in that rarity that I got. Um, Abyss Dweller looks okay, um, but Gold Sark looks really good honestly um so i think that's the winner out of my uh quarter century secret rares and i mean the the telling signs are you just get this like foil grid like work everywhere and down here you have the watermark of the 25th uh quarter century logo um next we will jump to the uh, what are these? These are the Prismatic Secret Rares. Um, let me make sure that I'm getting this information right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, these are the Platinum Secret Rares. Uh, like what we, what Duelist got back in like the 2014, 2015, I don't know, older tins. Um, they actually look really nice. I think out of these, honestly, my favorite is Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. I think that one just looks really good in this, uh, in this Platinum Secret Rare. Um, I mean, like, Break Sword looks okay. Pot of Duality looks exceptionally nice in reality. And then uh, Primeval Planet, Per, per, Luri, per Lureno, like that also looks good, but I think my favorite is the Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Um, next we'll go to the, um, what's the next one? Next we'll go with the Prismatic Collector's Rare. Yeah, Prismatic Collector Rares, which were first introduced in the West with Rarity Collection 1 and were a big hit, so these ones have let's see if we can yeah you see the like rainbow speckles across the it's a uh, yeah the holographic daughter dotted pattern all over the card and the name is in silver that's how you know that it is a prismatic collector's rare this is the same as a japanese collector's rare um as introduced in rarity uh, what is it? Rarity Collection 1. But here we got, you know, Garuda, Twin Twisters, Perlareno, Anti-Spell Fragrance. I actually like that effect with Anti-Spell Fragrance. Um, Silent Magician looks pretty good in it. Pot of Duality in this one as well. And then I also really like Rinbrum in this rarity i think that actually looks really good um then we get to what is my favorite of these uh luxury rarities the prismatic ultimate rare uh 
And these, you know, they have the, the gold text up top. They have uh, the, the foiling detail all over the card. But what really makes the card stand out is the, the 3D varnish. It, it almost feels like there's etching in the card art. And I absolutely love it. Like Blue Eyes Jet Dragon, that looks pretty darn good. Um, Psychic and Punisher, it looks okay, but I feel like the, the monster artwork is just small enough where it, it takes some of the effect away. Um, here we have Pirelli Pretty Memory. That looks okay. Silent Swordsman, that looks pretty good, honestly. Uh, and Magician Souls. Let's see if we can... It's in some really old sleeve. Let's see, I'm gonna take a risk, pop it out a little, see if we can get, yeah, you can get a bit better grasp of that varnish there. That looks pretty good. Um, you know what, let's change sleeves real quick. Uh, Rescue Rabbit, and then Solemn Strike. Looks okay. I I think I think Blue Eyes Jet Dragon might be my favorite out of this box in this uh, rarity. So those are all the rarities. That's that's the basics of what you can expect in this set. I mean, you get. Uh, if you get one of these 18 packs per boxes, then you're looking at rough, you're looking at 162 cards. Um, and you know, your, your distribution of the different luxuries will be different. Um, to some degree, but that's what you can it, this is a lot of what you can expect. I surprisingly, surprisingly there were some cards that I did not pull. Um, I, I was shocked. I expected to pull at least one of everything. And there are, I think when I was looking through the, the list um, and cleaning up, there were about three or four cards, I think, maybe more that I didn't get a single copy of, which was honestly surprising to me. Um, but I mean, I guess when you look at how many like threes and fours I got, it's not all that surprising. But let's actually talk about the cards that are included in Rarity Collection 2, because that is a big point of debate for, for the Yu-Gi-Oh community. Um, so we all agree that Rarity Collection 1 was S tier. Um, it was practically perfect. There were a few dud cards in there, sure, but we all agreed it was possibly the best set that Konami has ever printed. Um, it had a ton of staple. It, it had a ton of staples. It had a great selection of cards for, for uh, collectors and a fantastic selection for casual, for a casual audience as well. Uh, Rarity Collection 2, once the list dropped um, due to early box breaks and things like that, uh, people began to really come down harsh on it. People were already skeptical when it was first announced. But then when the full list came out, you know, a lot of the people who were kind of defending it, in including myself, honestly, sat there and went, eh, this isn't as good as I was hoping. And you can read more of my thoughts in the Geek Tyrant article down below. Right now I'm gonna do a real quick run of thoughts. Overall, I think this is, Rarity Collection 2 is, in my opinion, a solid B tier. You could maybe make a case for A tier. Um, I say that because I'm not so familiar with what was happening with Yu-Gi-Oh! between about 2006 and about 2020. 
So that's about a 14 year gap that I, I kind of have in my Yu-Gi-Oh knowledge. And so there may be things that I overlook. There are certain cards that I go, why the heck is this in here? And it could be just something where because I wasn't playing, I don't understand the appeal of that card. That being said, there are a few cards that I do want to shout out. We're gonna start with the cards I wish had been included. Number one, uh, I understand why polymerization was in here actually. It's definitely one that I think caters more to the collectors and the casuals because very few people, if any, in the competitive scene actually run polymerization. But give us the alt art. There were so many cards in Rarity Collection 2 where we got alternate artwork for it. There were, I think, seven, seven or eight alternate artworks in this pack. Give us the frickin' other polymerization that looks a million times better. That's all I'm gonna say on polymerization. Um, other cards that I wish were in here, Aroma Seraphy Jasmine. Uh, that's a very popular card for plant-centered decks, and it has only ever gotten a single printing. Meanwhile, a card that I, I can kind of understand when you hear some arguments for it, I can kind of understand for its printing. Um, Book of Moon, I don't think we needed another printing of it. Or where's the other one? I know I pulled a super of it. Where is it? Here we go. Mystical Space Typhoon. I'm sorry. I know for a fact that there were 50 eight printings before Rarity Collection 2, I believe. So this is its 59th. I understand, I think it's Mystical Space Typhoon where before Rarity Collections were introduced, it was the only card that was printed in every single Rarity. And so I'm sure that's part of why they included it. But I'm sorry, I don't need a 59th printing of Mystical Space Typhoon. Um, so though, I mean, those are cards. I just, I'm sorry, I don't get it. Um, there's also one, I think it's like Xyz Encore. I'd never heard of, I'm guess, from what I've seen, no one cares about it. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's cracked and I, I just am unaware of it. But like, that's another card that I'm like, why is that in there? I really wish instead we have gotten Aroma Seraphy Jasmine, we had gotten the alt art for Polly. Um, you know, give us a uh, branded fusion, which was uh, released with Albas Strike Structure Deck, and that's the only printing gets gotten. Give it to us here. Al uh, branded is a very popular strategy. Give it to us here. That would have a that would have been awesome. Um, some of the Trap Tricks monsters. I know Rafflesia is an older one, but some of the Trap Tricks monsters from the Trap Tricks uh, Structure Deck. That would have been really cool to see in here. Um, there, there are cards that I, I wish we could have seen more of in this rarity collection too, um, that we didn't. Now, some cards that I'm happy we did have, uh, I think getting, you know, the hand, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, I think that's a great call out. Um, I think Pot of Duality, I think that's deserving the other, most of the other pots were in Rarity Collection 1. I think it's fair to get Pot of Duality out there. Primeval Planet, the, the four planet cards, I think that was a great pick. I wish it, they had included Visa Starfrost, or Visa Starfrost, however you say it, um, at least as well, since, you know, like it's such, like, come on, give it, you gave us the four planets and basically nothing else. Give us the Visa Starfrost. Uh, I'm happy to see Garura here. Uh, I wasn't expecting it because it was released in Power of the Elements and that's a set that they are putting into the tin, which is a whole other bag of problems in my opinion. But uh, I, I'm really happy to see Garura in here, honestly. Um, let's see. Uh, I know there's a few others. Uh, the Pearly cards in here, uh, Pretty Memory, Hap My Friend Pearly, and Pirelli. Uh, all three of those were fairly expensive. Now the prices are dropping, so Pearly decks will probably be seeing a huge resurgence um, in the competitive scene. Um, let's see. Uh, I mean, of course, we have Dark Magician cards in here, Magician Souls and whatnot. Uh, Dragoon. I think that's a worthwhile entry in here. It was a terror in the TCG for a while, if for no, 
even if it was just for a brief moment when everyone, including myself, thought it was broken, uh, to have yet another print of it is great, uh, in my opinion. I know Edison format, TG Hyper Librarian, people are really happy about that. Uh, Ultimate Slayer, that's a good card. Um, oh, uh, Guardian Chimera, another fantastic reprint. Uh, I know it's fairly popular and it only, I think it was also a Power of the Elements. Maybe it was, it, it was another set where it only had one, maybe two other rare uh, printings and it was costing a pretty penny. Access Coke Talker, fantastic card still. I mean, it's lost a little bit of its height, but it's still a pretty solid card. And to get another printing of it is absolutely amazing. Um, I know Saravis for the voiceless voice players. Uh, Droll is huge this format, I believe. Underworld Goddess of the Closed World, I believe, is very popular. Uh, let's see. I mean, for Edison people, getting Raiko in new uh, rarities is absolutely fantastic. Um, oh, Apollosa. Apollosa, another fantastic reprint, especially with the alt art you know, really helps the the people who don't have a ton of money really get a key card like her. Um, and the altar for IP Mascarena, once again, helping to lower the prices, gives us an awesome artwork for the card. I prefer this over the uh, other artwork. It looks awesome. I love the motorcycle in it. Um, and especially since it's being paired with SP Little Knight, which just released in Age of Overlord, uh, you know, we're looking at, there are good cards in here. And if you are someone who has felt priced out of some of these meta cards, now you feel like you have a chance of actually having a more viable and competitive deck at a lower price point, which is fantastic. Um, for the hyper competitive people, of course, that pool shrinks because there's a good chance that you've already, you know, purchased cards like Access Code Talker, IP Mascarena, Guardian Chimera, you know, those cards are ones that you probably already have, but you know, on the off chance you don't, there you go. So like I said, I mean, there are good cards in here that people want, that people need. And so I, I think it's not a flop. I don't think that Rarity Collection 2 is a flop. I think we all knew going in when they announced Rarity Collection 2 that it wasn't going to be as good as Rarity Collection 1. I think a lot of us were hoping it would be closer to Rarity Collection 1 than it actually ended up being. Um, but at the end of the day, there you go. I'm not, I'm not entirely upset about it. Um, I do wonder, I, I am on the fence on whether Konami made the right call in the card distribution. With Rarity Collection 1, you got five cards per pack and each pack was about four to five dollars, I believe. Um, whereas Rarity Collection 2, they more or less doubled it to nine cards a pack, for, but that also meant that they increased the prices to $10. And with fewer chase cards, I do question it if it was the right call on Konami's part. Um, I personally do really like the fact that with the increase of cards per pack, they also, you know, increase the number of uh, the luxury rare rarities, not only in each pack, you know, in each pack. And so there's a better chance that you'd get a luxury rarity, which is great. Um, I don't want to demean that. I, like I said, I'm on the fence on whether or not that was a good call, in my opinion. Um, let me know in the comments below, though, what your your most hyped cards for Rarity Collection 2 are, what your pulls are if you've been able to buy any packs or boxes of it, uh, and what do you think about this? Like I said, I'd put the, if we're doing a tier list, you know, Rarity Collection 1 is clearly an S tier. Rarity Collection 2, I think, is more of a B tier, maybe an A tier. I think you can maybe argue that. But, and also, do you think Konami should continue the Rarity Collection series? I think maybe they should, but I'll explain more about how I think they should do it in my article. Once again, you can find that in the link below for geektyrant.com. And until next time, I end my turn. <laughs>